Hello everyone, my name is Matt Atwood. I am the president and founder of Allergy Free, and we are gonna go through segment one today, which is gonna be the allergy statistics. Now, when we're discussing allergy statistics, what are, the real takeaway I want you to learn from this first presentation is going to be how common allergies are. I think you might be shocked at, uh, at how common allergies are, and the reason why primary care really needs to take the lead on this not be so uh, used to just forwarding somebody off to a specialist when you don't really have to, um, especially now that the uh, reduction of allergy specialists is, keeps going down and uh, the need for allergy treatment keeps going up. So what we're going to talk about first is going to be the allergy statistics and things you should know. So 25% of the U.S. population has it uh, allergies that means one out of every four people so that's walking through the grocery store going to the park uh, going through Disneyland imagine one out of every four people has allergies of some kind that have to that they have to deal with but the more important statistic and we're going to use this all throughout all the presentations here is one in every five patients that walk into a primary care whether it be pediatrics or pediatricians family practice, or even specialists like gastroenterologists, dermatologists, um, uh, urgent care, uh, general practice. I mean, any of those types of patients, you're going to have patients who are going to be dealing with allergies. And the thing is, most people that have had to deal with allergies have dealt with allergies all their life, and they just think it's part of life. They just have to suck, suck it up, suffer through it, keep taking their Zyrtec, and just dealing with it. They don't have to suffer. We have the ability to be able to identify what's causing the allergy and more importantly, reduce the amount or completely build an immunity to it as far as a tolerance. 58% of patients see their primary care for their allergies. So you're talking at, about pediatricians and family practice. They go to their pediatrician or their family practice doctor first. <coughs> With that said, that's where either a pediatrician, if they're having to deal with kids that have something like, for example, ear tube issues or ear aches um, and they're miserable, they'll send them over to an ENT. The ENT will obviously do surgery and then treat their allergies instead of treating the allergy first, which is actually what's causing the inflammation in their ear. Um, ENTs make money on surgery, so that's why they do it. But they also realize that their ears, eyes, nose, throat all deal with allergies, so that's why you'll see a lot of ENTs will handle allergy uh, services as well. Now you're looking at family practice, and a lot of family practice just don't deal with allergies or they think it's beyond their scope, will forward patients over to an allergist, and guess what? Patients don't like that. They, they want to come to their primary care, they wanna see their primary care, they wanna stay at their primary care, they like the primary care staff, they like the doctors, they don't wanna go anywhere else, they don't want to be farmed out. They want care, they wanna be able to come in and say, I am miserable, please help me, don't send me anywhere else, just take care of the issue. And if you're like most primary care doctors, you'll simply medicate the symptom and say good luck and send them out the door. You don't have to do that anymore. With the Allergy Free Program, we teach you how to identify what's causing the trigger, and to be able to add uh, sublingual immunotherapy to be able to treat the patient safely, low dose every day, and be able to eliminate their allergies within 12 to 24 months. 54.6% of Americans have, uh, are allergic to more than one allergen. So that means over 50% of the U.S. is allergic to something, they just don't know what it is because a lot of the patients haven't been tested. So that's the reason why we do the test. We wanna be able to identify what's triggering these issues. Allergies are the sixth highest national chronic disease ranking in the US. So if you were to add Alzheimer's, stroke, congestive heart disease, cancer, diabetes together, it still wouldn't match the 60 million patients that allergies and asthma have to deal with. So allergy is easily the most common yet overlooked disease state in the United States. And uh, so with that said, and knowing that primary care is going to be the main place to handle the volume, we need to be able to teach primary care how to be able to safely, quickly, 
and affordably handle these issues and try and eliminate the allergy for the patients themselves and eliminate that suffering. 50% of American homes have at least six detectable allergens. This will be stuff like mold, fungi, animals, insects, that kind of stuff that will be inside the house, especially during the winter months. So uh, uh, something like Chicago, for example. Um, Chicago patients, especially kids, have a lot of asthma issues uh, that have to deal with the cold on the outside or you have to deal with all the allergens on the inside because when it's freezing cold outside, guess what? The cockroaches and the rats and the mice don't like to be outside either. So they will also leave uh, detectable allergens in the house. Here's the real issue. Allergist shortage. There is a supply of allergists expected is to continue to decline even after 2020. So there's been a continual shortage of allergists in the middle of an expanding demand for allergists. So when you have global warming, you've got shorter winters and you've got more prolonged spring, summer, fall. So you're going to have more pollen in the air than you would a year ago, five years ago, 10 years ago. So you're going to have a continuation of increase of allergies, but you've got less allergy specialists getting into uh, the immunology world. So what does that mean? That means you're going to have more patients and less places to send them. So what does that mean? That means that primary care has to be able to take the responsibility of being able to treat basic allergies in their practice without having to worry about forwarding off the patient to somebody else. Now, when we talk about asthma, 70% of asthmatics are triggered by allergies. So let's think about that for a second. If you know that 70% of asthmatics are triggered by allergies, the one thing that scares the hell out of kids is not being able to breathe and then having to go to an emergency room for an asthma therapy treatment. Now, when you go to an emergency room for asthma therapy or asthma treatment, guess what? That's a ten dollars to $12,000 visit. Nobody likes to do that, um, especially if you're in a managed care model. You want to try and treat the allergy, which is what's triggering the asthma. If you can treat the allergy, identify what's causing the allergy, and put them on sublingual immunotherapy to where their body literally learns to ignore that particular allergy trigger, then guess what? 70% of the asthmatics stop having asthma attacks. So if you can identify the allergy, treat the allergy, that's the key. Now we're going to talk about the pediatric allergy march. Up to 30% of kids showing the following allergy symptoms, such as skin rash, which is eczema, colicky babies, otitis media, conjunctivitis, are caused by underlying allergic inflammation. In the Pediatric Allergy March, we'll show you this in the next uh, segment, in segment two, um, under the Allergy 101, but we're going to go over that here shortly. But the key note here is that when you identify early signs of allergy in kids, it always triggers out to a cascade of events that ends up being asthma as they get older. So when you also take a look at as many 40% of infants that have atopic dermatitis, which is skin rash, can become asthmatic by age four, which means they have issues with asthma or they could have issues with asthma as they get older because 40% of the infants that show any kind of skin rash are going to have an inflammatory marker uh, for allergy. Almost 80% of kids with otitis media have been diagnosed with allergic rhinitis. So now you're seeing that ears, eyes, nose, throat are all linked together. So if you know that 80% of kids showing otitis media have been diagnosed with allergic rhinitis, that early sign of allergy is what migrates out to more uh, higher, more difficult conditions um, like otitis media. So now we'll talk about kids with predisposition. So if one parent has allergies, there is a 30% chance the kid will have allergy. If there's two parents that have allergies, there's a 70% chance the kid will have allergies. So that's what you need to think about when you are dealing with kids with allergies and pediatrics. And that's the reason why we go over the Pediatric Allergy March, because if we can identify these things early, identify what kids are having problems, or even beforehand, get the parents to where they no longer have the allergies and then handle and then hand that uh, tolerance down to the children, that's even better. So the next segment is going to be key concepts, and that's going to be considered Allergy 101. Thank you for listening to the first segment on the statistics. 
So now you know how popular allergies are. Now let's get down to the basics of how to treat the allergy and what basic allergy concepts are to be able to, to teach these particular concepts to your patients as you treat them in your practice with Allergy Free.